welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for coming today to uh, Quick Trips Natural Gas Educational Seminar. Um, first off, uh, what I really want to do is thank our sponsors, uh, the Creek Group, Volvo Mac, and the uh, Wisconsin Kenworth organizations, um, both for helping us sponsor this event, uh, being a large part of, of what we're doing with natural gas and really uh, allowing us to get out into the public, uh, work with organizations like yourselves to uh, really educate, uh, promote, and learn about natural gas as a vehicle solution. So um, with that, uh, we'll have an introductory main panel. Um, start off with myself, Joel Hirschbeck, uh, Superintendent of Alternative Fuels at Quick Trip. I'll also have Emily DeVillers from the Clean Cities organization up to speak and uh, talk about her organization and how she can help you uh, with alternative fuels and natural gas uh, information. And then we will have a uh, light duty uh, session uh, with Kelly Muldoon from Ventures Vehicle Systems to talk about uh, their products uh, and services and what they can offer from a light duty standpoint. We'll have a short 15 minute break where we'll head out uh, outside for refreshments, uh, outside to see uh, some of the natural gas vehicles that we have on display. We've got a Volvo 12 liter out there as well as a Kenworth uh, and some light duty vehicles uh, to look at, um, plus a lot of uh, people with, um, I would say, expertise or knowledge on those vehicles. So please uh, come prepared to ask your questions and, and find out and learn as much as you can today. After break, we'll come back and have a heavy-duty breakout session. Uh, we'll have representatives from the Creek Group with Volvo, uh, from Wisconsin Kenworth, as well as our own uh, Quick Trip Fleet Services, uh, Carl Serra, to speak uh, about the heavy-duty side of transportation with natural gas. So with that, we will get started. So I uh, just want to start out with a quick uh, history on Quick Trip. Um, it started in 1965. You see a photo of our first store there um, opened up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At this point, we're not selling uh, gasoline or diesel, um, just a small uh, convenience store, or grocery store type uh, setup. And then as you can see, as the timeline progresses, we continue to move forward and expand the number of stores, uh, getting to upwards of over 400 stores now today. Um, really with a strong focus in 2002 on promoting our food products, uh, commodities, uh, really offering a value to our customers and starting to replace some of the tobacco um, decline that we've been seeing. And so really thought we needed a new promotion, a new product to really take over as our, our focus from a sales standpoint inside our store. Now, as you can see, in 2012, we've transitioned into alternative fuels and natural gas being that, that key alternative fuel. And that's really the focus of Quick Trip now is trying to provide what that fuel of the future is going to be. It's a uh, family-owned company by the Zietlo family. Uh, it's a great thing. It's through their vision, uh, their foresight, that we've been able to continue to progress as a company, continue to grow, and to do things that are, are leading edge, like natural gas, to be out there on the front lines, uh, really promoting new things and providing great services to our customers. All of the ownership of the company has been passed along through uh, extended generations into the third and fourth generation. So we have the comfort of knowing that Quick Trip is going to remain a family-owned company for some time, and that's a good thing. We're currently employing over 10,000 co-workers. Of those 10,000 co-workers, uh, 1,400 of them work solely in our support center to really drive and support, maintain, and make sure that all of our stores and our operations are working. Uh, full of product, fully staffed, all of those things that it takes to run a C-Store. What you see here is our mission statement at Quick Trip. Now, when you walk into our main office, you're not going to find anything elaborate, etched in stone, up on a, on a big wall, but, but you're going to find that most of our coworkers know this mission statement, and it really comes down to the core values of who our coworkers are. It comes down to, you know, that, that last part of, you know, treat others as you would like to be treated and make a difference in someone's life. And I think if you think back to your experiences, if you've been to our stores, you've probably felt some of that and some of that, that core competency, that, that emotion and that, that care for the customers coming through. Why are coworkers so vested and so uh, entrenched in what Quick Trip is? Well, it really comes down to some of the benefits that are offered to them. 40% uh, of our pre-tax profits are, are given back to all of the coworkers. If you think about that for a minute, how many companies do you know that offer 40% of its pre-tax profits as a cash bonus to its coworkers? Uh, it, it's, it's unprecedented. It, it really 
ensures that our coworkers are there. You know, they want to sell that extra donut. They want to ensure that the bathrooms are extra clean. They're vested in what Quick Trip does. They're vested in the success of Quick Trip, and that's extremely important. And you also see uh, real estate ownership from a Quick Trip coworker standpoint. Uh, all of our new properties that we purchase, uh, build, are all owned by Quick Trip coworkers through the CSI uh, investments or convenience store investments program. And really, what that allows is again coworkers to be invested in what Quick Trip does. The new things that we do, our expansions, uh, new stores that we build. They want to see those succeed, and it's very important to them. And that, that all comes back to with natural gas as well. It's just as important for all 10,000 coworkers. It's just as important for those 1,400 coworkers that are supporting all of our stores that our natural gas programs are successful and that they're, they're providing a benefit to, to the community and to the organization as a whole. Uh, some accolades that you can see from, from the vested uh, involvement of our coworkers uh, in Milwaukee, rated uh, number one workplace in southeastern Wisconsin through the Journal Sentinel, and uh, ranked top ten in the last two years in the uh, Star Tribune up in the Minneapolis market. So again, you're seeing some of the things come through, uh, being recognized for that the coworkers really do want to be a part, want to see Quick Trip succeed. Quick Trip's always caring for its environment. Uh, everything that we do, all of our planning, all of our programs, uh, really evolve what you see on the screen there. All of our new stores are built to lead certifications, and now you're starting to see things like natural gas, uh, another green alternative from a fuel standpoint. Uh, these types of things are always part of our organization, um, and it's important to us as we grow and, and expand and establish new community relations. Vertical integration is, is key to Quick Trip success. Um, what it's allowed us to do is offer the best quality products uh, at the best quality prices. Um, as you can see, 80% of everything sold in our stores is either produced or transported and warehoused through our own uh, organization. Uh, we have our own dairy, warehouse, beverage plant, uh, bakery, kitchens, ice cream, ice plant, uh, food safety lab, transportation. And it's all of those things that put together allow us to pass on savings to our customers and our guests. And that's really important to us. And those are the types of things that allow us really to get involved with what we're doing at Quick Trip and to understand what types of products we have in our stores. And transportation is a key role there. We've got our own transportation organization, Convenience Store LL, or Convenience Transportation LLC. And in that fleet, we've also got natural gas, and it's a part of that. So in addition to offering natural gas as a fuel uh, option to our guests, we're also operating in our fleet. So from a success standpoint, from uh, uh, a need to perform, it's got to be there for our own organization as well as for our customers. And that really gets us into our natural gas uh, program. So you see our Quick Star, uh, Quick Trip natural gas programs. Really how it began was it started with the question, ownership and senior management asking us what are we going to sell for fuel in the future? And that's really what's been the question that's out there. And finally, you know, through some research, looking at all different alternative fuels, we found out that natural gas is really the answer to that question. It's the one fuel that can stand on its own two legs. It doesn't require government subsidies. Uh, it's, not, it's not tied into anything else. It can stand on its own two legs and be a success uh, in the fuel industry. And here's why. Uh, you look at the U.S. average retail fuel prices, 2005 to 2012. You see in the middle there about 2008, 2009, you see a natural gas, your bottom line, breaking away from uh, typical petroleum products. It's uncoupling from petroleum. And that's really key to the success of natural gas because it's no longer following the trends that your typical oil products were following. And so now you're seeing more of a flatlined, stable uh, fuel price that customers can count on. So when you're looking at making different investments, transitioning fleets into natural gas, you start to see that trend of, of a consistent price, a price that you can now plan, budget, do different things that, that really help natural gas stand out on its own. In addition, you're looking at you know, a $2 spread on diesel, and, and that's really where you start to see the benefits. Again, it can stand on its own two legs. It doesn't need government subsidies. Economically, it works. Why does it uh, separated? Well, some of the additional things are it's abundant, it's domestic. We have over a hundred year supply of natural gas in the United States alone. Um, 
98 percent of the natural gas that we use comes from North America today. So you're going to have that supply. It's there. There's more there than what they're claiming or proven. Um, there's unproven gas that's still being discovered. And, and that's really what's allowing natural gas to, to remain as, a, as a, a prominent new alternate fuel. And you'll see as, as Quick Trip progresses here, we're moving to make that more of a mainstream fuel option. It's environmentally friendly. Uh, if there is a leak, it dissipates, making it safe. Um, it has 90% less emissions than your typical diesel or gasoline and 27% less emissions of greenhouse gases. So you've got environmental benefits. Uh, you can kind of see the graph or to the, the picture on the right of the screen there. That's your carbon footprint. If you look at the top uh, molecule, that's a diesel molecule with 14 carbon atoms in it. If you look at the bottom, that's methane or natural gas, you have one carbon atom. So that's where the cleanliness really starts to come in from a visual perspective. Uh, the economics behind it, internal and, exter er, and external and national, really work. The ROI works. For our fleet, we're going to see under a year for an ROI, a return on investment, with the upcharge on natural gas vehicles. You've got the spread between gasoline uh, or natural gas and diesel, and that really is what's driving this, this movement forward right now. As well as being a domestic fuel, you're now putting dollars back into the U.S. economy, uh, supporting U.S. jobs, and really starting to promote uh, the U.S. as a whole. And it's safe, lighter than air. It will dissipate if it's leaked. Um, it's, it's got a higher ignition point. You're looking at a 1,200 degree ignition temperature versus gasoline that's around 600. So from a safety standpoint, natural gas is as, as safe, if not safer, than gasoline in many ways. So what is Quick Trip doing with natural gas from an infrastructure standpoint? Um, well, this is, this is our tentative list right now. All the fall is pretty much set. Um, what you're seeing right now from open stations, two in La Crosse, our start event, which is south of Milwaukee, is open. Oshkosh is open. And Rochester is, is open for the public. Um, and then you'll see Minnesota City, Owatonna coming on board in November here. And then we'll have uh, Pewaukee and Sheboygan starting up in December. So by the time the calendar year is over, we'll have nine CNG stations throughout the tri-state area that we operate in, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa. And really what we're doing is we're starting to put dots on the map. We want to build that functional infrastructure. We want to connect every major market, every major corridor with natural gas so now it can be a, a, a mainstream fuel option for the consumer. Um, if it's not right in your backyard, but you've got dedicated lanes going from uh, Milwaukee to Minneapolis, you can fuel along the way. You have the confidence that it's going to be there. Um, and we're going to continue to grow that. So in spring, we'll probably have another 10 sites opening up, and then another 10 to open up in the fall. So by this time next year, in the tri-state area, we'll have 30 locations of natural gas, really connecting the dots, connecting the major corridors, and building that functional infrastructure. How that looks on the map, here you have a, a, a quick view of that. Um, some of the dots are already outdated because uh, we've been moving along, putting stations, they've been starting up. Um, but you're really starting to see how we're starting to connect the dots in the markets that we're looking at. And that's really going to be key to making this go from a alternate fuel to a mainstream fuel. How else are we doing that? Well, that's your CNG, your retail experience. Uh, we're not putting up one dispenser with a small compressor on the back of the station. Uh, it's it's full-scale compression, fast fill, 10 gallons per minute. You're in the diesel island with full truck access. So again, you're going to be able to get to those dispensers as you need. Uh, as you can see from the, the left picture there, we're using the same Gil Barco dispenser that we do at all of our other gasoline or diesel operations. Um, so we want the experience to the consumer to be exactly the same. You're under canopy, you're by the store, you can go inside, you can purchase the items that you typically would. Um, it's a very comfortable feel. It, it's, it's what's really going to drive natural gas to be a success. Uh, and right now what I'm going to do is play you a quick video. It's our CNG fueling instruction video. Retrieve the nozzle from the dispenser. 
turn the control handle one quarter turn in order clockwise. Attach the CNG dispensing nozzle to the vehicle. Turn the control handle one half rotation clockwise and lock the nozzle in the receptacle. Authorize the transaction at the card reader. No, the transaction will reset if dispensing does not begin within six minutes of authorizing the transaction. If this occurs, the transaction will need to be authorized again at the card reader. Lift the dispenser hook to begin viewing. CNG is added to the vehicle's tank. Dispensing is terminated by either of the following. The operator lowers the dispenser hook or a high pressure indicating the full vehicle tank. Once dispensing is complete, lower the dispenser hook. Turn the control handle on the nozzle one half rotation counterclockwise. Return the CNG dispensing nozzle to the appropriate location on the dispenser. Complete applicable paperwork. Fill volumes are displayed on the dispenser. Move the vehicle from the dispensing area. Do not move the vehicle from the dispensing area until fueling is completed and the dispensing hose is disconnected from the vehicle. It's as easy as that. Uh, filling natural gas, CNG, into your vehicle. Very similar to what you're doing today with gasoline or diesel. Um, you just have a little bit different connection to your vehicle. Uh, it's a positive lock system. It has to be locked onto the vehicle in order to dispense fuel. So from an environmental side, you also have eliminated all leaks. Um, if you go to a typical uh, gas station now and you go near the diesel or the gasoline pumps, it's usually pretty dirty underneath from different spills and things like that. In addition, if you wanted to, you could swipe your card and start dispensing fuel anywhere. It doesn't have to necessarily go into a vehicle. With natural gas, that's not the case. It has to be locked onto the vehicle or it won't dispense. If you disconnect it from the vehicle, it'll immediately shut off, preventing any leakage at that point. So again, from a safety standpoint, natural gas offers a lot of opportunities. The natural gas fleet solution. So I, I spoke about our transportation organization and how we're also operating these vehicles as much as we're, we're providing the fuel. Um, and that's really what's important. And we're right now finding a solution for natural gas vehicles in every application that Quick Trip offers, from light duty uh, uh, pickup trucks to the uh, off road spotters, class seven straight trucks to heavy duty class eight uh, tractor trailers. And we're really starting to see it fit in all of our applications. We're seeing successes from natural gas and really start to, to dial in and look at the numbers. And we'll do that later in our heavy duty section of, of the cost differential from. Uh, natural gas to diesel, the, the, the payback and the ROI really starts to add up quickly. And what we've done is we've leveraged our quick trip fleet experience. So we're taking everything that we've learned from operating these vehicles, uh, be it heavy duty or light duty. Uh, we're doing our own light duty conversions and installs so that we can completely understand how the systems work and operate. We're adding our own takes on the heavy duty side so that, again, we can, we can understand what is involved with natural gas. You know, we're working with different OEMs and really testing and operating different vehicles and really offering that information up to the public. If you want to know something about natural gas, reach out to us. We're happy to share what we've learned. Um, take take the, the learning curve down a notch and really really bring out what we've known and what we can do and offer uh, to you as to the public. So helping fleets really transition to natural gas. Um, we want to offer the same natural gas services and support to the public that we offer our own fleets. If you need help, we're going to be there. We'll help you out. We'll do what we can. Uh, we want to be a good neighbor that way. Um, and our goal is really to make the transition to natural gas on fleets as easy as possible. Uh, making, making their questions answered, uh, being there if they need something, helping them out, uh, demo units. Uh, we're happy to do different things that way. So uh, from Quick Trip standpoint, uh, we, we, we built the nation's first alternate fuel station in La Crosse, Wisconsin, really building on our infrastructure in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa, creating that functional infrastructure, and then providing fleet solutions to the public, uh, different services, information, technology that we can offer and, and really share what we've learned thus far with all of you. And that's really what today's about too, you know, getting your questions answered. If you see somebody in a white shirt, please go talk to them, uh, visit them, ask any questions. Uh, we'll definitely be taking questions at the end of today too with all of our panel members. Please uh, feel free to, to get a good understanding and, and find out what you need to know with natural gas. So with that, uh, I want to thank you. 
And at this point, I'm going to invite up Emily DeVillers from the Clean Energy Organization, and she's going to talk about what uh, she has going on. I'm with Wisconsin Clean Cities. We are a nonprofit. And we started with the Clean Cities program, and that's part of the Department of Energy. In 1992, the DOE saw a problem in the United States. The United States uses 25% of the world's petroleum, but only has 4% of the world's population. So to solve that problem, they created the Clean Cities program, and that's a national program. There's um, I believe 83 clean cities across the country and they serve 73 percent of the country's population. Now all of the the mission is the same to reduce petroleum use in the transportation sector. So we are located in Milwaukee but we serve the entire state. Uh, we only focus on transportation and our goal is to reduce petroleum use by promoting and educating the public and fleets about alternative fuels. Now we are alternative fuels neutral, so we do support and educate about them all. Natural gas, petro natural gas propane, ethanol, biodiesel, and electricity. As a whole, the Clean Cities program has reduced petroleum by 2.5 billion in the United States uh, annually. For Wisconsin Clean Cities, we're a nonprofit. Not every Clean Cities is a nonprofit. Some of the Clean Cities programs are in the, a city or state environmental office. For example, um, Clean Cities Chicago is in their city's uh, energy office. Now we are membership based, so here's just a sampling of our members, um, and they help us achieve our mission. In 2011, Wisconsin Clean Cities and its members and stakeholders reduced petroleum use in the state by 2 million gallons of gasoline and diesel, and that reduced greenhouse gases by 12,000 tons. A lot of what we do is connecting people to who they need and in order to reduce their petroleum use. So we will, uh, we are kind of a network. We know and have relationships with a lot of people across the state and also across the country, whether that's vehicle makers, vehicle conversions, the stations, the manufacturers that make the stations. We can also connect you with um, a similar fleet. For example, if you're a city, we can connect you to other cities that are using alternative fuels in every application, whether it's the transit system, refuse trucks, or just a light duty fleet. If you're a business and you want to be connected to someone to learn about their experiences in heavy duty, in um, in anything, we can connect you to the right people to learn firsthand their experience with using natural gas or any alternative fuel. We also um, help our members with grants, uh, whether it's uh, private or state or national grants that are out there. Um, so that's another huge benefit to, to a lot of our members. So what's happening in Wisconsin for natural gas are basically two things. In 2009, Wisconsin received $15 million from ERA funding to create the Wisconsin Clean Transportation Program. That will put over 300 alternative fuel vehicles on the roads in Wisconsin by 2013 and also has created 17 alternative fuel stations. Both of them are private or public. And out of those, um, there's, I believe, eight, 93 of them are natural gas vehicles and four natural gas stations. And two of them are public and they are in the city of Milwaukee. And then besides that, there's the Wisconsin Brown Table for natural gas vehicles. That was endorsed by Gov Governor Walker in the beginning of 2012 and he stated that there will be four roundtables across the state in order to 
create a network, a viable network for natural gas vehicles and uh, public and private fleets that want to use natural gas. Now, the first three round tables already occurred. The last one was in October in Milwaukee, and the next round table will be in January in Wisconsin Dells. Uh, these round tables focus on different aspects, uh, heavy duty applications, light duty applications, uh, the what needs to happen to your maintenance facility was a topic for the last round table. Um, so if you want to uh, be notified when those round tables occur, um, please uh, let us know. Uh, we can give you the agenda when it gets finalized and also more information on that. So there are 22 public natural gas stations in the state of Wisconsin right now. 11 of those stations were created in 2012, so that is something, a huge step. Now, not a lot of people think that Wisconsin is the greenest state in the country, and that's unfortunate because, especially for natural gas, we are on the forefront, and a lot of people are actually looking at Wisconsin and what they're doing and are going to try and copy what we're doing in the state. Um, now, there's seven private stations and five, five public stations that are being planned. Here's a map of where the natural gas stations are in the state. Yellow are all of the ones that are public. Green are, is what's happening, and those will also be public. And then blue are the private stations. So if you have any questions on natural gas or any alternative fuel, if you have questions about stations or manufacturers and vehicles, uh, please don't hesitate to, uh, to ask me later in the day, or um, I have information on Wisconsin Clean Cities as an organization and my contact information also on the back table. So please, we are a resource. We just want to educate the public and fleets about alternative fuels. So if there's anything that you need, please uh, don't hesitate to use us as a resource. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emily. Uh, up next, I will invite uh, Kelly Muldoon from Ventures Vehicle Systems. She will be up uh, to talk about her product line and what uh, she has to offer. All right, well, good morning, everyone, and um, thanks to Quick Trip for having me here to talk about the conversions that we do on Ford light duty vehicles. Um, my name is Kelly Muldoon. I do business development for Ventures Vehicle Systems. And today I just wanted to start off with a short video. Um, it features our CEO talking about our conversions with a truck that we actually took to Moab, Utah earlier this year. here in Moab, Utah, out here in the beautiful uh, uh, high desert. We just got off the trails with our uh, CNG Ford F-250. A lot of people still view CNG as kind of a, an oddity, so we wanted to bring our National Park System truck here with very light modifications and show that we can take this off-road and do anything that you would expect uh, heavily modified vehicles to do. We have BFG uh, mud terrains on this truck. We put on a, a very aggressive tire, a little suspension modification. It's a bi-fuel truck. It runs on both gas and on CNG. So this is a conversion that we sell these trucks to uh, people who take them every day, take them to work, energy companies that take them off-road and off to the natural gas sites where they have rigs out in the middle of nowhere. Those field services guys can take them anywhere. For 40 years, Ventures has been a company that worked with companies like Ford, the big OEMs or original equipment manufacturers, doing uh, third-party projects where basically we'd stand in for Ford and run the project as if we were Ford. Ford uh, has what's called a QVM program, Qualified Vehicle Modifier. Basically that means two things. One is that they've come in and they've certified 
uh, the assembly process, the way that you've done your engineering, the way that you've uh, uh, done the conversion on the truck, uh, the whole assembly process and, and everything that goes into it. What that means to the customer is that one, you get uh, the full Ford powertrain warranty. Uh, they, for any other CNG conversion, if you're not a QVM, they'll void their powertrain warranty. The second thing is that you can get the entire truck and the conversion system will be financed by Ford uh, Financial. It's a, it's a great truck. Um, you, can, you can't even feel the CNG kicking in and out. It doesn't sound any different, doesn't feel any different, but it's got the same low-end torque that the Ford F-250 always had, so it's good for crawling around, and I believe it's lifted up a little bit, so you can obviously get over a lot of these rocks that you wouldn't be able to get over into a normal F-250. You really can't tell the difference. For the most part, it's business as usual, except uh, natural gas is quite a bit cheaper in most places. CNG is, is abundant and it's domestic. Uh, we don't have to import it from overseas, from the Middle East. Right here we have in, in North America a hundred years worth of, of reserves, creating jobs right here in the, in, in the United States. It's a cleaner uh, burning fuel, about 25% less carbon dioxide burning through uh, a CNG and, and about 70 to 80% less NOx, or the toxic uh, gas that's usually burned off in a regular gas engine. here in Moab, Utah, uh, here in the beautiful uh, uh, high desert. We just got off the trails with our uh, CNG Ford F-250. A lot of people still view CNG as kind of a, an oddity, so we wanted to bring our National Park System truck here with very light modifications and show that we can take this off-road and do anything that you would expect uh, heavily modified vehicles to do. We have BFG uh, mud terrains on this truck. We put on a, a very aggressive tire, a little suspension modification. It's a bi-fuel truck. It runs on both gas and on CNG. So this is a conversion that we sell these trucks to uh, people who take them every day, take them to work, energy companies that take them off-road and off to the natural gas sites where they have rigs out in the middle of nowhere. Those field services guys can take them anywhere. For 40 years, Ventures has been a company that worked with companies like Ford, the big OEMs, or original equipment manufacturers, doing uh, third-party projects where basically we'd stand in for Ford and run the project as if we were Ford. Ford uh, has what's called a QVM program, Qualified Vehicle Modifier. Basically that means two things. One is that they've come in and they've certified uh, the assembly process, the way that you've done your engineering, the way that you've uh, uh, done the conversion on the truck, uh, the whole assembly process and, and everything that goes into it. What that means to the customer is that one, you get uh, the full Ford powertrain warranty. Uh, they, for any other CNG conversion, if you're not a QVM, they'll void their powertrain warranty. The second thing is that you can get the entire truck and the conversion system will be financed by Ford uh, Financial. It's a, it's a great truck. Um, you, can, you can't even feel the CNG kicking in and out. It doesn't sound any different, doesn't feel any different, but it's got the same low-end torque that the Ford F-250 always had, so it's good for crawling around, and I believe it's lifted up a little bit, so you can obviously get over a lot of these rocks that you wouldn't be able to get over into a normal F-250. You really can't tell the difference. For the most part, it's business as usual, except uh, natural gas is quite a bit cheaper in most places. 
CNG is, is abundant and it's domestic. Uh, we don't have to import it from overseas, from the Middle East. Right here we have in, in North America a hundred years worth of, of reserves, creating jobs right here in the, in, in the United States. It's a cleaner uh, burning fuel, about 25% less carbon dioxide burning through uh, a CNG and, and about 70 to 80% less NOx or the toxic uh, gas that's usually burned off in a regular gas engine. get it to turn here we go okay so um, like Jeff said uh, ventures was established in 1971 um, we've been a tier one supplier to companies like Ford Chrysler Case New Holland for over 40 years um, we're a family-owned business just like quick trip we're a minority owned um, our headquarters is actually in Adrian Michigan um, we've got six facilities that span just over 750,000 square feet and we also just opened a facility in Louisville Kentucky next to the Ford Kentucky truck assembly plant so what we do, um, for, for 40 years we've done supply chain management, logistics, third party program management. So um, an example of that is when you go in and order a Ford accessory kit, chances are it could have come from Ventures. So what we do is our engineers work with Ford to develop the bill of material. We go out and procure all the components, bring them in house, package them, and then redistribute to the dealers and the parts distribution centers. Um, now what this means for our CNG conversions is that we're used to the scale and scope of doing this. We've been serving the Ford dealers, the Chrysler dealers, the Case New Holland parts distribution centers for 40 years, um, every dealer in the country. So how we got into this space, um, in 2008 when the automotive crisis hit, we were actually number seven on Mopar's debtor list. And so what our CEO vowed was that, one, we were going to make it through this, and two, when we got out of it, we were going to make a difference. So we started doing CNG conversions. What you can see here is some of our customers and then our three brands. So I didn't talk a lot about VWorks. What that is is an aftermarket parts program that we have, and I'll show you some pictures of those vehicles in a couple slides. So here you can see some of the trucks that we've done. Um, you recognize the National Parks truck from the video. Um, here in the bottom corner, our Ford F-350 was just on an episode of Top Gear about a month ago. Um, they actually had a contest to see who could make it from Portland, Oregon to San Francisco on one tank of gas. So I encourage you guys to look that up uh, when you get a chance. And then on the top corner you can see one of our demo vehicles that we deploy in the field as well. So this is our VWorks brand. Um, I just put these pictures up here just because people like to see some of the other things that we do. Um, the top vehicle with the claw we just debuted at SEMA last week. Um, that was actually built for the show Swamp People. I don't know if anyone in here has ever seen it. Um, and then the red Jeep and the green Jeep were on Sons of Guns. And then this is our Baja KTS series. So we do a lot of different things at Ventures. <clears throat> so the reason that you're all here is to learn about CNG. So Joel talked a little bit about the benefits, um, clearly in the environmental concerns, um, the political visibility the national energy security, and then the cost of the fuel itself. Here you can see this chart from two th or April of 2012 showing that CNG is much cheaper fuel than all of the others. And then we talked about this as well, it's abundant, it's domestic. Um, and then also the OEM involvement. So companies like Ford and Chrysler are investing in this space, um, showing that it's a viable industry long term. So how our system works, uh, we developed the system with Ford, so it's fully integrated with the Ford system. Um, and it actually maintains the OBD2 functionality. So what that means for your customer is that when you pull that Ford CNG vehicle into a Ford dealer, they can plug it up to the original diagnostic equipment, find out if it's a CNG related issue or just a, a regular Ford related issue. You can't see it in these pictures, um, but our tank sits in the back in the bed of the truck. I don't know if some of you picked up the brochures that are on the table, but you can see that there's a toolbox cover, takes up about two feet of the bed space. And then Ventures provides full service and maintenance training, so whenever a customer orders a truck from us, we'll actually come out, have our technicians train the local dealer that you ordered the truck through so that they can service and maintenance your vehicle. 
So we offer um, buy fuel or dedicated conversions. What that means is on the buy fuel truck, there's a switch inside the dash, which you saw in the video. You can choose between gas or CNG. Um, that vehicle gets a combined range of 650 miles. So you have your standard Ford gas tank and then the CNG tank, uh, which is 21.2 GGEs. Um, on the dedicated version, it's just the CNG tank, so you get about 275 mile range. Um, you also have on-the-fly switching, so the switch that's inside the dash, you can be going 80 miles an hour down the road, flip between gas or CNG, and you won't feel any difference, you won't hear any difference. And then as Jeff said in the video, because we're a QVM, you maintain the full Ford warranty, and you can finance the cost of the conversion um, through Ford credit at the dealership. As far as ordering and transportation, um, we have a remote ship through in Adrian, Michigan, and a ship through facility in Louisville, Kentucky. So what that means is that when you order that vehicle from Ventures, it comes right off the assembly line from Ford. We do the conversion, put it back in the rail system, and it can be delivered to any Ford dealer in the country. Um, last on that list, and actually very important, is that we can do additional upfits. So it's a little bit different than some of our competitors that will just offer you the CNG conversions. So when you send us that vehicle, um, like you see on the National Parks truck or on some of these here, we can put on brush guards, headache racks, wheels, tires, bumpers, whatever your fleet needs are, we can do that at the same time that we do the CNG conversion. So for you, it's a one-stop shop and you don't have to deal with the logistics. Um, lastly, we have the biggest demo fleet in the industry um, for, for an aftermarket converter. Um, I have 14 demo vehicles and actually Quick Chip, we just picked up one from them that they had for a while. Um, so if anyone is interested in testing out one of the trucks just to see if it fits your fleet needs, um, see me after the presentation I can get you some more information. We also have four of our used demos um, for sale that have under 20,000 miles on them. So if you're looking at maybe adding one vehicle to your fleet, it could be a good option for you. Uh, here's my contact information. I also have business cards on the back table next to the brochures. So I encourage you to stop by afterwards, ask me questions, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan with Convenience Transportation. I'm here today with one of our newest natural gas semi-trucks, Class 8. Uh, this truck has been out being used, br bringing uh, everything that trucks bring to the consumer of the world. Uh, as you can see, I have it running at the present time. This is a very quiet and fuel efficient type of vehicle. Uh, we've actually had customers take and say that they don't hear the delivery truck come anymore to the store because these do take and run uh, extremely quiet. This uses natural gas to run on. It's the same fuel that you use in your homes to take and to heat your homes and cook your food. But we are now starting to use it in North America to power our vehicles. It is uh, extremely clean, a lower emissions, and it is domestic. All of the fuel for this truck comes from North America making North American jobs in both bringing us the gas and producing the equipment to uh, make them run up and down the road. Company that I work for, uh, the parent company Quick Trip Stores, is made the commitment that we're going to bring natural gas to the masses and we are in the process of putting this fuel in as a fueling station in our stores. Uh, this truck will take and do everything that a diesel or gasoline truck will take and do, but it does it cleaner and more environmentally friendly. Uh, the cost is uh, greatly reduced. Uh, this truck will take and save us up to 33 cents per mile that we drive it on a savings and fuel cost over having a diesel truck, which will make the cost of the products to the consumers much less because the transportation costs can go down with a natural gas truck. There is over a hundred year supply of natural gas. If we could convert every single vehicle in North America to natural gas right now, there's over a hundred year supply of fuel domestically and we're finding more every day. 
suffer any power loss going down again? Uh, natural gas can, contains about the same power and performance and fuel economy as it does with uh, conventional fossil fuel in gasoline or diesel. Uh, this particular truck is about 95% of it is a standard diesel truck. It just has some component changes on it to be able to uh, burn or utilize natural gas as a fuel. Uh, rather than compression ignition, it is a spark ignited uh, vehicle, very similar to your average uh, sedan car. <clears throat> It, uh, it hauls the same 80,000 pound load that any other, any other truck that is operating in North America. The, uh, the main thing is, is the fuel savings and uh, being domestic. It's very, very user friendly. It drives and operates the same as a diesel truck. Uh, they also take and there are several manufacturers now that are getting into making the uh, natural gas automotives that uh, a lot of municipalities and that are going to. Uh, there are even a few consumers and consumers that are starting to use natural gas to power their personal vehicles to get them to and from work. Okay, we were talking about how much this truck is the same as a regular diesel truck. Essentially from this line here down is the same diesel truck that we have had in North America for probably 50 years. The main difference is this arrangement right here which feeds the natural gas into the engine to burn, uh, basically operating like a carburetor. The other difference is it does use different fuel tanks on it than uh, the others because it is a compressed gas rather than a liquid fuel. Also operates extremely quiet. As you can tell, I am standing here next to a 350 horse engine while it's running and I can talk over it normally like uh, anything else. A normal diesel engine, I would have to be shouting with the hood open like this. No, the tanks themselves uh, there's actually a lot more safety features because it is something new and they don't want to have any uh, any problems with it. There are mass flows that if something happens it actually closes a valve where your ordinary gas tank, if you, you pull a line off or whatever, it's going to run out on gravity. This is going to take and close. If it's in an accident or something like that, it's going to close the fuel off. Uh, the tanks are actually designed and tested way beyond a gasoline tank. A liquid tank would take and be. Uh, one of the tests that they do on these tanks is they actually fill them with fuel and drop them from a 40-foot crane and they have to contain the pressure. Uh, another thing that they take and do for testing is they actually will take and shoot the tank with a gun. Uh, and be sure that it doesn't catastrophically fail. It, it might leak, but it isn't going to catastrophically fail and explode. Tank cover, the tank itself is inside here. It's a, what we call a class four tank, which is a composite tank with a impermeable liner in the inside of it. The vehicle is fueled through a fuel box uh, it contains a positive lock fitting, so there is no chance of a spill or a leak, unlike your modern uh, gasoline vehicle, where if the nozzle is taken out of the vehicle or whatever, it can spill all on the ground, get into the environment. This is a positive lock system that uh, it doesn't get released to the atmosphere. Now, in a normal vehicle, would they have all this the same box? Like, no. all gauges? Nope, this is, this is all for, uh, for natural gas. The gauges in that, this takes and tells me what I've got for pressure going into my engine. This takes and tells me well, how much fuel I have left in my tank because it is a pressure gauge, not a liquid level gauge like uh, we're conventionally used to seeing. Would you have a gauge like that up in the... I have, I have a conventional 
fuel gauge in my dash that reads full to empty just like a normal vehicle but it is not temperature compensated so I need to, at times to know how much fuel I have I need to know how much pressure I have and this is where I get that information All right, we're taking and uh, listening to this engine again. We have, we're over on the other side of it here. Uh, essentially, on this side of the engine, every component here is the identical component that would be on a diesel engine. Uh, this side is just a little bit louder than the other side, but we've all been out on the road and have heard the, the rattle of the diesel pickup next to us or the big truck. This large of an engine with the hood open like this would take and make lots of noise if uh, it were a diesel. Uh, you know, noise is a pollution also, and this is another step into uh, curbing noise pollution, especially in our large cities. Uh, this is vehicle is being used now in a, applications of a lot of garbage trucks and city trucks. Uh, in fact, the city of Oshkosh has started uh, garbage collection with this uh, type of vehicle.